Como se dice Fiend. Raw Down. Como May twenty second in Vegas. Vegas. You guys ready? No. Why not? It's the city of sin. What are you talking about? Oh, I don't know, man. not I under McMahonism, crazy. baby. Oh, uh, true. Como se dice McMahonism? They completely <laughs> forgot about McMahonism the week they did it. <clears throat> I think they, they probably got did. trouble. It hasn't been addressed. Also, where is Chapo? He got sad and hasn't been addressed in like a month and a half. Ooh, Chapo! The episode where we Fine. talk about that just came out, so another four months, this is even less relevant. <clears throat> JR, I forgot that happened. JR took him in the back and started spanking him and said, You better get out of here, Chavo. Get out. And he's like, Okay, JR, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Jim I didn't, Ross, I'm I didn't, sorry. I didn't mean to do this to Eddie. Oh, but the Jim Ralph. And he said, Go on SmackDown with your shit friend Ray. Blue that brand he trash. He's I don't not. Know. No, he's not there. No, but he could he's be. Dead. Nobody's seen Chavo. <clears throat> yeah, they don't care about Eddie on Raw. Are you kidding me? Emerald. Yeah, we guys don't have 50,000. Yeah. Wait, who the fuck is that? Fuck oh. you. Another raw, another raw down fucking takeover. Are you kidding me? Smack oh. up shitter Joe is here. Oh, shit. I'm here to Joe. not talk about the show. Get him. Joe. Listen. I wanted to make a little bit of having a uh, cross-brand promotion because there's a draft coming up next week, and you guys oh. wouldn't know it because they don't talk about it. They do not talk. They don't about talk it. about it. So I set up this whole plan of having you know run-ins, you know having the boys come over, having switching brands. They don't talk about it. There's no. They don't care about the draft. It's next As week. Usual. Get excited, the guys. The draft Yay. is a What are you talking about? <clears throat> I guess you're right. We're all ECW bound now. But before we get into yeah, that, true. Benny. Fez. Oh, Benny. Benny. Benny Emerald. That's her full name. I've heard this. I saw the birth. I've heard uh, this. I saw the birth certificate. People are saying this. Like, I know you didn't want us to tell you by your call you your real name, but, you know, I found it out. Tell us about Vince. Well, Vince is a little upset because uh, last week. Uh, his son, Shane McMahon, got, well, he got concussed by Triple H with a sledgehammer. When Triple H was supposed to concuss or kill, I'm not exactly sure what he was going for there, uh, Shawn Michaels. But well, Shawn Michaels, being the goat he is, uh, dodged at the last second. I'm saying. And uh, Shane took Triple H's, Triple H's, uh, big meaty shaft to the face. That's right. Uh, and uh, got knocked out. And now Vince states, thanks to his son's superior genetics, he was able to only make it out of there with a slight concussion. And he is demanding, live in front of everyone, that Triple H apologize. For his transgressions. You get or the else... drugs! The drugs! Will... The drugs! The drugs! The drugs! The drugs. <laughs> the drugs! The drugs! What are the drugs? We don't, don't know. The drugs! Uh, they got some around some drugs. We're in Las Vegas. They can find some. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, no. Fuck Vince. The drugs are all in the ECW locker room. <laughs> Don't ask uh, what's in Rob's bag, please. It's just, it's, it's nothing, dude. It's nothing. It's just Do a couple not sticks. Ask what is in RVD and Terry Brunk's car in like a month and a half. No, please. Oh, brother. They're just bros vibing. Come on. I'm sorry. I've seen the visions again. Pardon no. me. <laughs> Listen, man. We're it's Monday Night Raw. You guys excited? We're in Nevada. We're in Las Vegas. Vince uh, just said he was stupid. Vince said, you know, concussed son, his semen wasn't strong enough. But yeah, then... It was, it was just strong enough. What's going on in the it. ring, guys? We got the red carpet. We got the podium. We got everything here. And then we hear a car oh, crash. And I go, what is that? And it's Mick Foley. Hey, dressed come on, guys. Nine, dude. Yeah, he was dressed up. I don't know where... What did he go to? He went to Men's Warehouse? Pilates. DXL. DXL? You don't think he went to his, Men's his, Warehouse? His tie was out of season, though, I'd say. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, it was May. Could have been. 
you know, had some autumnal themes going on, but, you know, Mick, he's just an old scamp, you know? Yeah, Mick's here, he's very excited, he's very happy to be here in Vegas, Nevada, but, you know, he's not a bad guy, it's okay to cheer him, you know, parents tell the kids booze aren't really necessary, I'm the lovable guy, come on, look at this smile, I'm the human Muppet. But guess what? I don't like being here in Vegas. You know what? I don't like Vegas. Because all you guys, all you do is just, you know, live your life on chance with a roll of the dice or a spin of the wheel. You know what? I earned everything I got. I didn't become a three-time champion by rolling the dice. I didn't become a two-time New York Times bestseller by putting a quarter in a slingo machine. And my brain broke and melted (laughs) as soon as he said a slingo machine. What is a slingo machine? Is that real? Maybe he was talking about Plinko. Maybe, Maybe that's like the, the betting version, but we're too uh, old to uh, know what this is. Or it too young. 2006. Um, which is kind of weird Alleg- to say. Damn, Allegedly, <laughs> Slingo is a real thing. Okay, tell me about it. I need to know. Slingo is like the company that makes it, and they have different kinds. You can play a Slingo Mahjong. Oh. You can play a Slingo Blackjack. It's... um. Plots. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm going to take an off tangent, but it's so bizarre to hear this, like, allure of Vegas growing up when you're, you know, growing up in the 2000s, right? And you're going, you see all this media of them throwing quarters and machines, quarters and machines, and then you actually go to Vegas in your mid-20s, and everything is digitized, and you just t- tap a card, or you get these, like, just piece of paper, and you feed into a machine. It's not as fun as just dropping a quarter in. It looks fun. Not money. fun anymore. Yeah. Everything's just, you know, not, no no money at all until you get a, you cash it out, <laughs> pretty much. Or you, or you win too much and then you get your knees beat up. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, Mick, Mick says he earns it. He earned every single thing in his career, as did his guest tonight, my love of my life, the rated R superstar, the most viewed champion of the last five years. Who has his undefeated streak, ladies and gentlemen? It's Edge. Oh my God, dude! Did Edge show Mick Foley Reddit? <laughs> yes, yeah, Edge. But that's what it fucking felt like tonight. Like, we already know. <laughs> we already know Mick is like a number one company guy with a big smile on his face. But oh my God, he was he was slobbing on it tonight. That, that's what happened, dude. That's why he didn't know any better. Like when they had the hardcore match, they were like in the hospital bed together. And Edge is like, good match, Mick. And Mick's like, shut the fuck up, I hate you. And Edge's like, wait, wait, look at Hold Reddit. On. Look at so many, look at all these upvotes. Look at all these updudes. <laughs> and he's like, up- upvotes, eh? <laughs> You're telling me. Like, yeah, it's like people cheering for you. And he's like, oh, no way. And then he shows them the Meltzer Nielsen ratings. And he's like, dude, we look how much views we got. And he's like, oh. You tell me we got uh-huh. views. Oh, we got views? You tell me we got uh-huh. views? And uh, Edge and Lita are here now in real life with Foley and Lita um just respectful that's all I'm gonna leave it at that's crazy yep. crazy fit Looking she's got on they come into the ring uh McFoley kisses her hand Mwah. and Lita does a curtsy back to him I thought that was very nice <laughs> they dap each other up Foley's uh jaws on the floor and he says let me say for all of us holy crap holy freaking crap guys oh a woman I know. He's like, you know what, guys? I know what you're thinking. What's with all this crap? Uh, why am I in this suit? Why is she dressed to the nines? Why is Edge uh, got a beard on? It's very unsettling. You know, guess what? I don't care about anything here. I hate the WWE. Actually, guess what? I hate ECW more than WWE, though. And that's why I'm here. I don't care about Tommy Dreamer or Terry Funk's opinion. You it's embody the them, hardcore. Them the slime of the slime. ECW. Yeah, the slime that oozed out of ECW, which is why I got you this. And he rips off the thing on the podium, and oh my god, it's the hardcore belt. It's back, no baby. Freaking way. Just like today's FTW belt, he gives it to the old retired man, Edge. He goes, hey, guess what? You're hardcore. You're hardcore, Edge. You are the Edgester. That taught me Reddit. So here's my gift to you. And Edge is like, "Uh, uh, uh." (laughs) 
Thank you for the gold, <laughs> kind stranger. Dude, Vic, you know what? I got. You know what? I can't accept this. I mean, it's true. All of it's true, but you forgot to mention one important thing. I've got the hottest girl in Vegas coming to bed with me tonight. Mick, you're the hardcore legend, not me. You had to toil in obscurity and bingo halls for years. You had to bite your tongue when Ric Flair called you a glorified stuntman, and while I did, beat your ass. I can't do it, Mick. You deserve to be hardcore champion. And then Mick's like, wait, well, come on, man. I, ga- I-, I gave you a gift. You're going to give it back? Hey, come, on, hey, come, hey, come on, hey, we're really... Like, are you serious, dude? Hey, whoa, hey, I think you whoa. deserve it. You think I deserve it. You know what? Guess what? How about I beat the shit out of you? One more time right here tonight. And the crowd goes crazy. I was like, oh. I'm a Bengals jersey. Is really yeah. No, that was, the, <laughs> that was the Ocho Cinco jersey. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was so this excited. This was a real sicko moment for him. <laughs> the guy in the Ocho jersey might have gotten a live suck off <laughs> from these two here tonight. And Edge is, Edge is gassing up the match. Edge is going crazy. Edge is like, all right, you know what, Mick? I got a better idea for you. And he points in his face, right, and hits his nose. And he goes, Mick, I got a better idea for you. Goes up to Lillian. He goes, abba, 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 abba. and then Lillian's like, okay, you know what, guys? Here are your new co-holders of the WWE Hardcore Championship, Edge and Mick Foley. And they'd raise each other's belts together. And you know what, honestly? Made me a little warm inside. Made me a little... I was like, oh, man, they're so cute together. But ECW music hits. We're like, what the fuck is this? And Paul Heyman is back, guys. Oh, ECW. Hey, Emerald. That's Walrus, yeah. by the way. Is who? Remember Walrus? The guy who comes out to the ring in the suit, and you're like, that guy looks like a walrus. He looks like the penguin. That's him. That's Paul Heyman. No, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? <laughs> you would call him Walrus. Did I? <laughs> Yes. Every time. Every, Every time. Single... Huh. You know, like, you know, remember Roman Reigns, Emerald? It's 2006. You remember Who Brock Lesnar? I don't know. He's seen wrestling sometime in the future. He's a poor guy. He's a like for sure. Anyway, you've like seen this guy. Or whatever. We'll send you a pick later. Uh, Heyman gets on the mic. Again, he's like... Vegas, just give me a little bit of advice here. This is the only state where it's legal. As I find it ironic, as I look in the ring and see live prostitution on Monday Night Raw. Ha 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 Lita, I'm not talking about you. You know, that was actually pretty good. Heyman, you know, he saved it. It went from a, a woman joke to, you know what, Mick Foley's the prostitute. That's right. I was like, damn, okay. No way, he cooking. You are a legend, a man that gave his blood, his sweat, his tears, his sacrifice to entertain each of these people. Here you are, a man that took time away from his family to entertain these people, and you prostitute yourself away from them for Edge and Lita. You prostitute their love and admiration for the Mick. You're prostituting your name. You prostitute your legacy. But I'll be damned if I sit here and prostitute the name of Hardcore. Mick, look yourself in the mirror. See the reflection, and all you see is a shell of your former self, and Foley's pissed. He's like, Paul, I'm going to clear things up. You know what I see in the mirror? I see the coal holder of the WWE Hardcore Championship. Flob. I see a real-life action figure. I see a WWE superstar. I see the author. How ironic is it you criticize me, Paul? You have nothing left. You're not a GM of SmackDown. You don't have your own company. You've got nothing, no power. Go back in the hole. He says, your company is owned by someone else. (laughs) Is that is pretty fucked. Yeah. Also, Foley promotes a book he's working on now that will come out next spring. We got to do a. Uh, we got to do a. Uh, was it Scooter? Scooter. I had. Well, I had that book. No matter what. We'll do that on audiobook. We'll have a live reading. Yeah, we. That'd scoot. be funny. Uh, Heyman's like, you know what? He's right. I'm powerless. Pick. Uh, you're right. I don't. I don't. I do have the power to make a challenge, though. I'm involved in this little pay per view known as ECW's One Night Stand. Sunday night, June 11th. Whoa, it's coming up. My suggestion to you at ECW One Night Stand is that we will take the co-holders of the hardcore title. Is this a legit title now? I don't know if it's actually recognized, but... You know what? I got two guys that are going to beat your ass up. Extreme style. He Mick found Foley... two dredges of society. <laughs> and Mick Foley's like, so you know... Uh, Paul Heyman. Yeah, you're chock full of suggestions, Paul. Why don't I get the hell... You get the hell out of our building. Why don't you listen... As I say, no freaking way, Paul. And then Paul Heyman starts cackling. He's like, what I find funny, Mick, 
is I look at you and I look at Lita and I look at Edge, and Lita's the only one in the ring with nuts. Lita's got nuts. You know what? Heyman Heyman's the uh, the man of the people. Heyman Heyman loves women. I think he's the Nico of Raw. Lita starts grabbing her crotch and being like, "No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't." <laughs> Well, you know what? Lita's got nuts. Hey, man, I got your opponents for you. And you know what? I got a little excited, guys. I'm going to be a little honest with you. This was a good segment. And you think, okay, so he's going to bring some ECW icons out here to fight these two. So you're thinking, like, oh, man, he's got, like, what? Raven? Ooh. You know, Sandman? Maybe Sabu? And then then as you peer in the corner, you just see 70-year-old Terry Funk... (laughs) <laughs> and and in the true uh, essence of slime that Mick was talking about, Tommy Dreamer, as he's r- leaving a p- puddle behind him as he comes out, yeah, and you're like, and you're like, that's holy shit! The two exactly, <laughs> exactly. But the way they set it up was like, listen, those guys couldn't get it done with you. We got two ECW legends for you, and it's the same two fucking people that were already on the show. <laughs> so, uh, Edge and Foley go up to the stage, uh, and they start getting their ass just hit by chair. Not chair, was it a trash can lid? I think they both had yep. that, right? Terry Funk had a chair. Chair, okay, chair and trash can lid. Trash can, they think, were yeah. they were fucking walloping them. They were killing them, dude. They were pilmanizing that man. They were killing him. Edge has got like a dent in his head from that trash can that <laughs> Tommy was doing. It was it was nasty, man. Uh, it's hardcore, even. Nick Foley hardcore. gets thrown. He, he, Nick Foley's knees got dusted into the steel steps, and then uh, true, Edge and Lita got Connie out of there. Taking that fucking spot, he like he got thrown into the steps by Terry, and then Mick did like a fucking full flip over yep. the top step. I think landed maybe on the top of his neck or something. Even. Yeah, just as my foot got torn to shreds in the early spring, his knees are have even less cartilage than my foot. And somehow he was able to get up and fumble over the barricade with Edge and Lita and leave. This segment was fucking rad, dude. I loved it. Well, as as they're leaving, Ty, somebody has a disposable camera pointed at (laughs) Foley. What is he doing to Mick Foley? Dude, he's got his ass in 144p. Mick (laughs) Mick Foley's putting his hand up, and you'll see that dusty image maybe one day. I'm going to ask that guy, hey, you got that image? Do you think he went to the what CVS after and got that printed? Yeah, dude. Uh, this looks like a oh, yeah, kind of guy. Okay, fair enough. I, uh, I will need to say uh, when Lita was on screen at one point, there was a big silver D out in the middle of the crowd. I thought that was funny. In Las Vegas, come on. In Las Vegas, yeah, big silver D. What's that supposed to mean? We'll get to what? it later. Oh, hey, what does that mean? What do you mean by it that? It comes back. Okay, and then. Uh, you know, you hear like the snake, like the Kodak, go, brr, 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 and it's all Jerry Lawler. He's like, King! Or the King here. Guess what, JR? And JR's like, Yeah. He's like, I, The Diva Search is coming back! 2006, you must be 18 or older! JR! JR, you gotta do it! You gotta find your IG Explorer and have them all sign up! And JR's like, I don't know what you're talking about, King. I love my wife. <laughs> That's fucked up. What was you the can't talk about JR like this while his wife was alive? <laughs> you you know he was a menace in the streets, dude. Come on. Can we talk about what the yes. demon search is? Yeah, isn't it just the they got a bunch of like round like they said eighteen or older women and they just had them do promos and uh look like dolled up for the camera to pretty much have the, the people cheer for them, right? And then whoever got the biggest pop or Votes where it'd be a new diva and a hundred thousand dollars. Come out in, bi- in yeah. bikinis every week. Bikinis, yeah, okay. I thought, was more so, than, I thought it was so more this, than this. This is a, a legal excuse for uh, Vince to uh, do his predatory work, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. correct. A thousand percent. Yep. yep. Actually, let me let me look up while Dave goes into the next match. Oh, I will look hold up. Hold on. No, no listen. Huh? I've. Oh, go I've on. Saved. I have some things. Okay, go I ahead. Let me well, look up the team is, search. That, that was a lot of Tommy Dreamer erasure. Fuck You're Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer not an ECW guy. What the fuck are you talking about? All right, listen here. Tommy Dreamer is way more of an ECW guy than fucking Raven is. Come That's on. not true, dude. 
it's a thousand. Raven, Raven was there for a fucking wink and a snooze, dude. What? Yeah, <laughs> no way. Dreamer didn't. Listen, Mikey Whipwreck is a more ECW guy than <laughs> Tommy Dreamer, dude. Come on. That's not even close to true when you know it. I think you get to be an ECW guy if you get your parents to mortgage multiple properties and then get yes. scammed by Paul Heyman and then plot to kill him. But you have yeah. less balls than Lita, so you don't go through with it. Yes. Okay, so I'm looking Tommy up... Dr no, Look, Tommy Dreamer sucks and is bad at everything and has a million concussions, but he is the epitome of ECW for all of those reasons. Okay, so Tommy Dreamer is a two-time ECW champ at 49 days, and Raven yeah. is a two-time ECW champion at 380 days. Wow, okay. He's cool. the guy, and Sandman's the guy. If you want Shane Douglas to be the guy. How long, how long was Sandman the champion? Uh, Five reigns, 446 days. Okay. How long was Mick Foley WWE champion? Oh, like two days, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, not a WWE guy. Yeah, he's not a WWE Drew McIntyre, guy. Drew <laughs> McIntyre, more WWE guy than Mick Foley. You heard it here first. What the fuck are you talking What's, about? I think Drew's been Damian there longer. Damian Priest is a better WWE champion than Mick Foley. You oh, absolutely, here. bro. Amen. The numbers don't lie. They spelled disaster for Tyler's career. I, I just think, when I think of ECW, I don't really think of Tommy Dreamer. Why are you I don't thinking know? of Why? ECW? What do you mean? I, dude, oh, I've seen every pay-per-view. I don't know. It's Tommy Dream. He's the guy. <laughs> Hi, are you telling are you talking me about? you're thinking of ECW while we're on Raw down? Are you the reason why ECW is invading Raw? When Ty thinks of WWE, oh. he doesn't think of Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is an FCW guy. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Listen, even Just Incredible is more of an ECW guy Shut than Tommy the Dream. Fuck up. No, he's not. <laughs> Just Incredible is the X Factor. Ty is, Ty is is fucking losing his mind. It's not true. When Smack up hears about this in four months. They'll be mad at him about it. Oh, oh billion percent. I can and assure I, uh, you, we will not be mad about it. Joe's right here. He'll tell him right now. Bro doesn't count. <laughs> oh man, up. damn. Come on, guys. Also, Joe did agree with me, and now he's trying to back up because I'm yelling at Ty. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Some signs that were here. One of them says Dunkle sucks. Shout out to Dunkle. Dunkle? No one says Kip is gay sauce. But <sighs> the most rude sign that apparently nobody else noticed. Some guy has a sign that says Christian is champ at that other show. Edges a curtain jerker on Raw. Oh Damn. shit. That's awesome. Yeah, shout out to that guy. When we cross the line in whatever, two months or whatever. Remember that. Shout out to Christian Cage. Christian. We'll we'll get there, dude. They're they're cooking over there in Impact Zone. Are they cooking? Yes. Uh, they no, are. no. It's no, it's some are. it's some good shit. <laughs> and I have been watching some early O six, and Jeff Jarrett is cooking as usual. Uh, I did look up Mankind just in case. He's a three time WWE champ at forty seven days. So. We're all a little bit around the same time. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Damian Priest, better than Nick Foley. Oh, don't Damn. you mean Punishment Martinez, the greatest yeah, ROH Martinez. TV champion? My mistake. Okay, also, here's the card for TNA this week. Okay. Well, the matches, at least. You've got Senshi defeating Alex Shelley, Jay Lethal, and Shark Boy in a four-way match. Fuck yeah. You've got a three-minute tag match with David Young and Elix Skipper. With okay. Simon Diamond, apparently. Yep. Defeating AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, they were trying to build Diamonds in the Rough as a good tag team. Well, they fed him AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels in three minutes? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Daniels had, like, 50 concussions at the time in, in storyline, so. Fair enough. Bobby Roode beat Andy Douglas in four minutes. Sounds about right. And Ron, Ron the Truth Killings defeated Monty Brown in the King of the Mountain Whoa. qualifying match. Whoa! Wow. That's big! Hold on, that's, the start of, that's probably the start of like a gang war for a storyline. Yeah. With our truth and uh, being uh, exiled with from that King group. Conan. Yeah. yeah. Also, Conan <laughs> is on TNA right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's honestly interesting, and I'm, I'm excited to talk about it one day. This is, this is the soft pilot. Soft pilot. Soft pilot. Yeah, two more shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ah, help! Ah. Okay. All right, Martin, are you done uh, yelling about how Ty doesn't know who Tommy Dreamer is, or? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Whoa! -wee. All right, take tell whatever us... that is off the soundboard immediately. Tell, tell me what uh, our 911 is with RVD being shit, dude. This is awful. <laughs> this is awful. I hate RVD now. He's on Pack Watch for real. As the person that also put him on Pack Watch, this was not awful. This was mid. But come on, the guy can't have a good match for once in his life. <laughs> this was fine. Relax. They gas, they gas him up uh, so hard. What? You know what? I'm refusing to talk about RVD because Martin just keeps insisting this was a great match. So yeah, I think great. I said it was I fine. Think, I think I, Martin's refusing to do your job. No wonder it. you're on Smack Up. That's right. No, you know what? I'm Yowchi. I think mama. we should. We, I think we should uh, subject this to Joe. You give this to me. All right. Yeah. Well, RVD comes out. Uh, cool. He's still got the briefcase. We get a replay of uh, how Shelton regained the IC title from last week's episode narrowly uh beating out triple h's count uh which of course we get to replay triple h beating everybody up stacking them sucking them and fucking them and then shelton comes out he's looking gooched up he's got a cool shirt he's got a cool necklace he's got cool sunglasses i fuck with that you know they get into it uh and look i wasn't really feeling this match but they they do some brawls rvd gets the upper hand uh <clears throat> Hits him with a with a with a spin and heel kick, uh, goes to do a rolling thunder, but Shelton gets out of the ring. We go to commercial, uh, come back, and uh, you know Shelton tries to hit, hit him up with a with a suplex. RVD reverses the the weight or the gravity or whatever the fuck Lawler says <laughs> and falls on Shelton. Uh, he tries to get a sunset flip pin, misses. Uh, or misses. He ki Shelton kicks out, and then RVD just kind of falls into Shelton, and then Shelton falls over, uh, and then goes for a uh, suplex. Shelton reverses with a neck breaker. Uh, we get a guy in the crowd that just really enjoyed that spot. I don't know why we needed to see him do that, but we did it. I saw the silver D in the back. Uh, oh, the D, yep, just keeps coming up. I don't know. I didn't notice it until now. Damn, because, the because there's an R and a V that go with it. No way. Silver RVD. No way. No way. No way. No there's way. also a second RVD set of signs that's red and closer to the ring, and also yeah. a fucking like a skanking uh <laughs> uh what's it sign too with the guy with the little like hatchet or whatever. Is that what, what is that, that called? Was? What's what's that guy? Somebody here knows what that guy is. Oh, hatchet man. Is that hatchet man? I don't. know. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm gonna assume. Yeah, yes. there was a black sign with a red silhouette of a man running with a hatchet. Is that oh, yeah. what my Sami Zayn shirt is all about? No way. Bro, are you guys an IC are you guys ICP members, bro? No. Uh, listen, <laughs> no. man. I remember somebody said, Is that a guy with an axe on my shirt? And I never understood it. <laughs> Damn. Alright, Ty is the I, guy with an axe. I also saw another sign during this segment called Uncle Judd three sixteen. <laughs> Shout I out to Uncle Judd. Yeah, I saw Uncle Judge. Mayamo, Uncle, Uncle Judge. Judge. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle. And Shelton uh, puts RVD in a, a rest hold. I gotta say, I don't like RVD's gear that looks like there was work put into it. It's not the ketchup uh, mustard like, pants. This one, Ooh, okay. it, looks cool. it looks cool. He's got like an alligator on it. You know, like RVD's gotta have like a yin yang on it somewhere. Uh, but it also has to be, like, shitty and tie-dye. That's, like, peak RVD gear. I, I see you. I get you. Like, like last week, they put a little too much into it. It felt like somebody actually designed the, like, blue, like, outlets and stuff. No. No, 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 This ain't, this ain't my guy. This ain't my RVD. I need the RVD that fucking toked up. This RVD didn't toke up before the match. He didn't fucking grab whatever the hell he had and just put it on. Yeah, he's very he on purposely edge. designed this gear, which makes me think he's trying too hard. Which was maybe why some people here didn't like the match. I dude. But also, it didn't seem like RVD tried very much here. <laughs> Ever since he's been back, he hasn't been trying, man. I, I, I gotta say, they're fighting both of them, RVD and uh, Shelton. Their fighting was sloppy. In this, uh, in this match. Hey, 
There we go. Well, for- <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's probably it's probably because they were in Vegas. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Good point. Very good point. Uh, RVD uh, gets out of the rest hold, gives uh, Shelton a kick, and then he pops up on the second rope and gives him another uh, flying kick. He starts doing uh, clotheslines and a nasty-looking super kick, I'll say. Hits him with uh, a backflip. No, that's a guy in the crowd with a camera. Thank you, Kevin Dunn. These camera shots are incredible. Uh, Get some setup for the Rolling Thunder. Uh, Shelton reverses. He gets the chair. No, he gets his IC title because uh, the ref got knocked over. He's going to go he hit him spot. with it. You missed the cool, you missed the best spot, which means you weren't paying attention, where Shelton ducks a kick into a Samoa drop that hits the ref's leg. The ref dies. And this is why the ref is dead. Um, yeah, come on, come on, Joe. Yeah, ref bad. got too close. Damn ref. But anyway, as he's reeling the ref, Shelton comes in with the IC title uh, and is going to, wants to hit RVD, but RVD hits him with a Van Daminator. But the ref That's was right. just conscious enough to see it. But like, whoa, 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 buddy. And disqualifies RVD. That the match is over. Off. Shelton retains by disqualification. That pissed me Yeah, because the Van Daminator hit the belt that Shelton was carrying. Yeah. Thus, using a weapon, he is disqualified. Yeah, they kept bringing this- up the whole time and this hasn't disqualified rvd in matches before during his return so whatever commentary shit on the finish they just kept bringing up rvd is like yeah yeah jr said it was a controversial decision by the ref whatever rvd doesn't care he fucking sets up another beautiful looking five-star frog splash just to emphasize how annoyed he is by this (laughs) and he smokes some mary jane yeah that's right before we uh, go into the next segment, though, I got the Diva Search contestants. This is the history that we have to deal okay. with. 2004, listen, Candice Michelle didn't even make the finals. Like the final. Oh yeah, she was not a part of the finals. There's another person in 2004 named Karen McDougal who was involved in an <laughs> affair with Donald Trump before his presidency, apparently, allegedly. Shout out. Or, yeah, so that's that's pretty crazy. She was not a finalist either. And then the finalists that of note going into 04 was Michelle McCool, who didn't win, Maria Kanellis, who didn't win, uh, and who, who won was Christy Hemi. I don't think she's even there anymore at this point in 06. 05 had Ashley Mazzara win, and Crystal Marshall did not win, which is bullshit. How could they do this? Joe, how do you feel about that as a smack-up guy? Crystal Marshall did not win the Diva Search. I mean, they're wrong, and she should have won. <laughs> and then uh, I don't want to spoil 06, so we're not going to get it. But they end up doing it in 07 and 2013. Apparently 2013 was, like, uh, unaired, and Eva Marie won. So shout out to that. Oh. <laughs> so this yeah, is, like, tough enough Marie. where whoever actually wins is almost never anybody important. Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Let me see. 07. Oh, that's a good analogy. Uh, 07, she won quite a couple belts, so I wouldn't say. Maybe they got one right. They got one right out ah, of them. Ah, poor qua. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Speaking of uh, sexual harassment backstage. Oh, my God. All right, guys, we return to just another segment of I wish Nico was here just so he could be just pissed about it, but... Uh, a segment that only exists so that Vince can, I don't know, talk about that he's cool friends with ZZ Top and also pimp out Candace Michelle to them. I don't know what the angle is that they are pushing with Candace Michelle just being used by Vince McMahon, but... It's horrible. It's it's sure not going away like we kind of thought it would after after McManism just kind of vanished, but... Oh, nah, you read the lawsuits, it never goes away. Uh, yeah, I mean, amen to that, brother. Yeah, it, uh, yeah this was fucked. I can, I can run it, through it just... quickly. Just, Vince is like, hey, look at my boy oh, ZZ sure. Top, and they're just like, hey, Vince, we love you. We're happy to be here. And Vince's like, I gotta, I gotta go out and uh, get my apology, but... Hey, 
here's Candace. And Candace comes in. She's like, hi, boys. And whoever the guy without the beard is just going. <laughs> and he's trying to, like, like touch her. He's like. <laughs> and then the guy with the beard just laughing. Like, her, her, her. And then she starts playing with the guy's beard. And she's like, hey, you know, my favorite band growing up was ZZ Top. He's like, really? Aw, shucks. And then they just cut away. Yeah. Well, she also says, hey, you like oh. my pearl necklace? Yeah. It's homemade. It's, it's, it's homemade. homemade. Yeah. Then and it's like, come. <laughs> come. <laughs> so Ty stupid. is personally crystallizing our life-saving semen and rock-tumbling it as we speak. Check out the raw down pearl necklace. Yeah, that's gonna Bubble. that's gonna come at the end of 2024 because it's gotta it's gotta solidify, you know. I can't I can't just sell them all. It's only gonna be one of one. The it's smack one up of one is kind, broken. Just like Rob Van Dam. Yeah. <laughs> our cummies, our cummies in the bank. Hit them up. Uh, <laughs> December seventeenth, twenty twenty four. It's gonna be on sale. Like our yes. Patreon that definitely launched in March. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's coming. Dude. Oh my god. Hold on. Do you guys hear the knocking on the door? Oh, we're waking no. up Benny Emerald as he gets his Goldberg out to the ring to talk about <laughs> Vince's <laughs> in-ring apology. As he, he gets, gets his, his Goldberg? Goldberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, oh, you knock on Benny Emerald's door, and he comes out spitting, going, Ah! I'm ready to talk about Vince's in-ring apology. His own personal Goldberg or something, eh? Yeah, he's, a, he's our Goldberg. I don't know why Benny's involved with this. The spirit spot has nothing to do with the second. You love Vince. No? Yeah, Benny, you love Vince. Whatever. First thing we see when we get to the segment is a sign. Shane, without daddy, you're nothing. Which is true. Okay. True. Uh, I also saw another sign as before the segment even started. Push Mike Shiano. I don't know what that means. Uh, I hear the crowd shouting Vince sucks as, you know, he's uh, getting out there. He's like, all right, where's my apology? Triple H, get out here and apologize for what you did to my son. He did not. He did not say, or at least I don't recall. He did not call his son the product of his semen. Good. Which I'm glad for that. The product of our semen, redbubble.com. Woo! Amen, brother. Uh, so, uh, he's like, Triple H, where, where you at? And Triple H is just begrudgingly and slowly making his way out. He finally gets to the point where they can start playing his music, and he's going down the ramp, just, just mad dogging, uh, Vince, got the microphone in hand. And you're just like, oh, yeah, something bad's going to happen. Triple H is going to just start attacking Vince. It's going to be great. Or he's going to tell him to go fuck himself. And so Vince is like, I just need you to say two words. Come on. And, and Triple H is like, only two words? Oh. You oh, got oh. it. Because I it? got two words for you. Oh. And, the, and the crowd is getting real fucking excited because he... they... They they got it in their head. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna say oh, he's gonna say it. He's gonna say oh. it. Oh. And then Triple H oh. puts the it? mic to his mouth. I'm sorry. Oh, Ooh. what the fuck, dude? Are you kidding me? Oh, what the fuck? Disgusting. Disgusting. This is bullshit. It was absolute dog water. That's not what was supposed to happen. Triple H is. We'll get to. We'll get to what Triple H is later. But like, oh, Vince no. is like, oh, oh, he said it. I'm sorry. Well, you know what, Triple H, I will accept your apology. Uh, when I command you at the main event to come out on stage with a sledgehammer and bash in Shawn Michaels' skull. Oh. Then I will accept your apology. And it's, I, I'm sick of this Shawn Michael Highway to Hell bullshit. It's been months. Just you kill love it, it, please. I hate it. Raw Down I is now Vince. called the Edge Show because we're not, we're not talking about Adam <laughs> Copeland, but we're just edging, waiting for Triple H to kiss Cena or say suck I don't, it. And I'm just I don't think can't. we can call it that since there's a guy in the show named Edge. No, yeah, no, 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 it's no. Adam Copeland now. We're we're all edging here. 
We just want Triple H to do something. But, uh... serving a huge amount of baby girl at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's true. He's he's mewing every chance he gets at every, like, time it uh, pants to his face. He's like, aw, mm. Yeah, he's starting to, not like when we... Not like when we started, you don't have to do this, and you don't have to do this podcast network, uh, where at that time, uh, he was looking very deflated, very freshly <laughs> off the tremboloni sandwiches. Uh, now he's sort of starting, his body is, is remembering what it's supposed to look like. So he like looks good, you know, like he's got, he's got the, the dark black denim jeans, he's got the shirt, and I, I gotta say... Uh, I don't like the shirt. I don't like the the, the skull crown because it looks like it's got like fucking four scraggly hairs. It looks like a fucking purge. <laughs> it looks like a purge of cowardly dog villain oh. at the bottom of like a pit. That's and yeah. Goes, like courage, you have to put the the thing back, and he goes. Woo! Return not good. Slab, not good CGI. H, but o- otherwise, a- H is H is serving some massive cunt tonight. That's that's Triple very H correct. versus Officer Sassy. Give it to me, Vince. Oh God. But yeah, dude, someone is gonna find Kira. Yes, I'm going after <laughs> Kira. <laughs> Speaking of Kira, are you guys excited for See No Evil? Even though we already we already reviewed it, it's already out. Go watch it. Yeah, it's out. It came out like months ago. See No well, Evil. Go listen to it again. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna put the whole thing in right here. Yep. Here's the whole. <laughs> You guys like smell that? what the what frick the is this, is this oh. heckin stanky so what the fuck is that smell? we got we got kane's apostle here kane is coming out ember let me need you to take a seat relax yeah we got we got kane's yeah, boy here down. tell me about it how you about i mean yeah, kane was part backstage? of it kane was backstage fucking hanging, backstage yeah he's talking with his with, boy yeah with todd grissom oh my god dude he's hanging out with todd grissom and it's like, hey, Kane. Uh, like, you had your movie May 19th. You know, how's it going? He says, May 19th was the date when his mother and adopted family were killed in a fire. But now it's gone, and he has a movie where he kills a lot of people. And the truth is, he's never been happy. Okay. Okay, And Todd Grissom just, just looks just... Uh, worried. He just looks worried the whole time. I'd be worried too. Shit. Kane, Kane submitted. Kane submitted the murder. Multiple people. And multiple. Todd's like, multiple. okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sure, dude. yeah, dude. Dude, yeah, I would yeah. shut my white ass up and listen if Kane pulled up and said that he's that he's killed people. So I can't. <laughs> I can't begrudge Todd Grish in this moment. Hey, no. does anybody else find it weird that his mom and adopted family died in a fire and then? Uh, the entirety of the movie See No Evil takes place in like a burned, uh, dysfunctional hotel. No. 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 Okay. Nah. No, the whole story of Kane Kane's, is that he Kane's already beaten the allegations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on, he man. Acqu- he was acquitted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, The Undertaker did it the whole time, maybe. I don't know. Possibly. Don't That's why he's on Smack Up. Yeah. Oh, true. That's why Great Khali needs to take him down. I'm saying, so, <laughs> but someone who's never gonna leave Raw to go to SmackDown is Chris Masters, and he's here. True I hero. I fucking wish he did. Oh man. True hero, Chris Masters. He's such a ham. Why are we having this match? Why are we <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. I... There's a sign that says you're at here. You're at here. You're right. at here. Let's go back in time, put in our ads, and give it to that guy. Thank goodness this is a non-title match, because I thought there might actually be some stakes during this segment. I still don't even understand why there is another Intercontinental Championship match. What do you mean? (laughs) This ain't an Intercontinental Championship match. I'm talking about previously. Rematch clause. Oh, rematch clause, Benny. Yeah, if you are the champion and then you lose, you get to have a rematch for it. Ah, Which was a shitty thing that stuck around for way too long. Yeah. Because every time the belt changed hands, you had to have another match the night after. So you had to lose twice to lose your fucking belt, really. It sucked. Or they spend another month building it because the rematch clause isn't enacted until the next pay-per-view. 
It could be upwards of two months away. Or they just forget about it and people complain <laughs> online. Yep. It'd be like that. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, well, there's also a sign here that says, We've seen enough. So, <laughs> Hard <laughs> agree. Yeah, Barn- With John Cena's name. Barnes got to tell us about Chris oh. Masters, you know, his big beloved body and Cena the, the shit head, you know, bad chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Logan. everybody in the crowd, dude. Yeah, the crowd hates him and his lizard genetics or whatever. Yeah, yeah man. John Cena what? will not break the master lock. The crowd hates this guy. Okay, all right, lizard John Cena, I guess. <laughs> That's right. Here. If Chris Masters comes out and he's popping his titties. Ooh. And Jerry and Jr. are really excited about that. Yep. BBL are- Chrissy. And then we are jump scared by an unfathomably loud and bass boosted Paul Heyman ad read for X Men the official game that is sponsoring One Night Stand. It legitimately scared me. It's so much louder. It's clearly ADR Paul Heyman. I hated this. And then Jerry Lawler just starts bitching about ECW and why it's here and how much it sucks because Jerry actually hates ECW. And JR's like, I don't know, we made a lot of money last year. Somebody has a sign that says, Hey, Cena, go back to 8 Mile. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Wow. This, Cena gets a pretty positive reaction this week. The people are excited about John Cena. Jim Ross says he's been hotter than Donut Grease. Yeah, oh, my. Has been promising all night to kill John Cena with the Master Lock. Match starts. Chris Masters flexes. Lock up. Test of strength. Cena wins. Masters eye pokes him. Cena takes over, elbow, body slam, then a short elbow drop off the ropes that I've never seen him do in my life. Gets two. More Irish whip. He, Cena gets kicked, gets Masters up for the AA. Chris Masters slips out, bounces off the rope, clotheslines the shit out of the back of John Cena's head. His head really hit the floor. And then just kicks John Cena's corpse out of the ring. Cena comes back in, gets hit with the delayed vertical suplex for two. Chris Masters calls for the lock. John Cena just grabs his arm and is like, no, you can't, no, for about a minute and to stop the lock from being fully put in. And then just like a rhino charges himself and Chris Masters out of the ring with no regard for either of their bodies. And we go to commercial. And then after commercial, in the span of about 30 seconds, John Cena gets the better of a strike exchange, back body drop, two clotheslines, flying cross body. That a bunch of bullshit he puts in the STFU and Chris Masters taps out immediately. Yep. So for all for all the credit in the world, Martin, I have to give you that you called it you called it day one of Raw Down that Chris Masters is bad. But like for tonight, <laughs> this match really accentuated that for a guy whose finishing move is as a submission maneuver, Chris Masters might technically be the worst technical wrestler ever. I ever got think so? so almost almost never. I got so mad at this, and I'll yell about it. If you, are you guys done about talking about this? I'll wait till the end. It, it, just just go for it. Okay. There was a yard sale sign so, in the crowd. I thought it was funny. Yard sale? What are they selling? Hiya! Brought down yard sale. Career. Do they got Brought down yard sale at time in location? Check it out. Do they got Flintstone surprise a dinosaur peak for the NES? I will buy that right now. Give me that. I'll no, take it for ten bucks. Master's career, though. Oh yeah, yeah, that's sold. That's up the river. Let me yell about that. <laughs> Chris Masters built up as this big beefy boy. Him and hanging out with fucking Carlito, and you're like, damn. Once he breaks off, he's gonna be a big star because look at him. He's big. He can't talk, but he's big and can do a cool move. One cool move. That's all you need right now, right? Come on. Yeah. Yep. And then yep, uh, yep, yep. he wins a lot of matches. And then he loses a lot of matches. And then they have him versus the WWE champion, and he looks like a fucking dingus, wingus, pingus. He fucking sucks, dude. I he couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. He couldn't move at all. He couldn't do anything. He did an elbow drop, which was cool as shit, and he tapped out in five seconds. He looked like a fucking loser. This he is the second so or, fast. This is the second or third time he's been put in the STF and just tapped out instantly. Yeah. I he can't handle it for whatever reason. I'm a freak. So I've been building up rankings or just like even just like people's win loss oh, yeah, record the of the year. Score, yeah. Chris Masters is now after tonight five and ten of the year. Yeah, but what's his ELO? Oh, zero. Because he can't win any <laughs> ranked <laughs> matches. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. He was carried up to uh 
to Platts, but he can't get a oh, dub God. to save his life on his own. Where's Carlito can't at? Believe, can't believe he was hard to carry to play at, backstage. Oh, he's backstage. They have the great Kali running around, yep. who is even worse. No and shot. They just don't give Chris Masters anything. I just, I've yelled about this since week one. I don't get what you're doing here with this guy. He gets this like, massive entrance. He gets this look. The the commentators gush about him, and he looks like an absolute loser. He has some kind of title match every other week, and yeah, it just gets goofed on. This uh, wasn't even a title match. In comparison to the Great Khali, the Great Khali uh, just doesn't leave his feet, and every every week they're like, holy shit, he kills somebody. And he just killed the World Heavyweight Champion. So he is just that guy. He's him. He's him, unfortunately. He's, he's him. You always knew he was him. Yeah. He will always be him. Masters can't sniff a victory to save his life. Nope. And why should he? He's got one move in the bag. Uh, yeah, honestly. Yeah. It's it's an unfortunate turn of events from early in the year. Chris Adonis, we know you're listening. If you disagree, come on the show and we'll debate you about it. I, I, that wouldn't, we know fun. more about you than you know about yourself. <laughs> you think you know us, Chris? You don't. Adonis? Come on. Be real. Get real here for a sec. Wait, who's running in? It's RVD! OMG! I can Whoa! smell him before he comes he's out. The suitcase. That hashish is in there. Is he is he gonna cash it in? No, dude, that's a that wrong briefcase. You're right, Joe he Joe comes got it. Out, yeah. He comes out with the briefcase, and John Cena is ready to fucking fight because he thinks he's gonna get cashed in on right now, which I assume is why this match happens. It would make yeah. sense that Rob Van Dam would cash in on a weekend Jahan scene. But R V D grabs a mic. He's like, listen, this briefcase is my only shot at winning a title because they would just never give me a title shot that I deserved. So I'm going to cash in at a place that's a little more friendly to me, at a place that fits my vibe, at a place where I'll be supported. I'm cashing this in at one night stand. And the crowd's like, oh, my God. Holy shit. Rob Van Dam is calling his shot. Because when you're a good guy, you have to be an idiot and tell people when you're cashing in instead of just do being smart and cashing in when their leg is broken. But he's going to cash it in at the Land of Extreme at one night stand. And then RVD and Cena, after Cena does a shock poggers face that RVD would cash in at one night stand for some reason, they get nose to nose. Very close. Whoa, Cena, oh, RVD like... kiss? Question mark, question mark, question mark? Once again... John Cena really wants to kiss somebody, but he doesn't. I don't ship this as much as Triple H. I'm gonna. I don't. I don't feel the just latent chemistry here that I think he has with Hunter. No, I don't know if I'm alone not. in that. No, but... no, this no. Too sudden. No, this is not. This is not an enemies to lovers no. situation here. RVD is like anti horny. I think, <laughs> even though in real life yeah. he's the horniest motherfucker in the world. Mm, nah, he's. Like, yeah, he's really. Yeah. He does not know what sex is on screen. John Cena also doesn't, but he wants to. Triple H definitely does. But anyway, so they go face to face. They start fight. RVD slaps him. They fight a little bit. Chris Master says, it's my time. And grabs the Money of the Bank briefcase and tries to kill John Cena with it. And then Cena makes him look like a fucking idiot again. Ducks it and just kills him and kicks him out of the ring. But RVD grabs the briefcase that Chris Masters threw to the side when he was getting pummeled and uses it to hit John Cena with the Van Daminator. And RVD is actually getting booed here. That's crazy. It's, yeah. The crowd is so mixed. Tonight. How the mighty have fallen. Was he ever mighty to begin with? Hey man, he can do a frog splash. He can, Look, he can do that. Like earlier on, when I joined in, and there was a lot of just bullshit matches where he was the only like competent wrestler, I was like, "All right, RVD's doing it good. You guys are crazy saying he's on Pack Watch, but uh, <laughs> he's, he's he's just not he's not doing it. Not about it. It's I don't know what's going on. Like I thought, like RVD 2006 was supposed to be like this legendary run, and it's not. It's very bad, very bland. Like as Martin said." His good match earlier was just mid. That's pretty much what you're going to get from him. 
Hopefully he saves it at ECW one night stand. That would require there to be a good ECW match, and that'll never happen. (laughs) Ooh. Come on, man. Unless Tommy Dreamer's involved, number one ECW guy. I didn't know you were such a fan. (laughs) You love Tommy. Yeah, now I'm Tommy Dreamer's number one fan. Oh, no. no. Because Ty thinks Tommy Dreamer is not an ECW guy. The wildest take I have ever heard. No, he's... (laughs) (laughs) Come on, man. Yeah, so we go from this to, uh, I, I, I really feel like what happened in this segment is they just got, like, whoever was standing around at catering and just said, <laughs> hey, you guys have five minutes, figure some shit out, because I don't know why any of this happens in this fever dream of a segment. <laughs> the smallest segment possible. So we open up backstage somewhere. And Carlito is explaining how to cheat at card games to Maria. And he's like, listen, you mingle around at the poker table, start talking to people, and then you come back and tell me what cards they have. And Maria's like, but that's cheated. Carlito says, hey, man, it's only cheating if you get caught. And then he pulls an ace card out of his afro, and I thought that was actually funny. So they head out to go cheat at poker, and Snitsky is just standing there in a suit and Maria's like hey Snitsky you want to come cheat at poker with us it's like no I can't I responded to an ad in the paper and I'm gonna meet a real Vegas showgirl we're like oh okay I think she's over there and Snitsky eats a mint <laughs> checks his breath and heads out and there's somebody in a dress with just a gigantic ass hanging out and you can't see their face importantly and Snitsky just gets down on the ground and starts caressing their feet. It's like, oh man, these are great. Also, we should go see See No Evil. One time I killed Kane's unborn fetus, but we're cool now. <laughs> That's not even a joke. <laughs> That's that not a joke. <laughs> awesome. That is what gets said. It's in that exact inflection. Yeah, so he says that. And then the camera pans up, and actually, it's Goldust in a dress. Oh. And, Go- and Goldust's like, why did you touch my fucking feet? <laughs> and she's like, bro, I like feet. Why are you dressed like that? Goldust says, I yeah, like whatever. Like yeah, I like dressing like this. What's wrong with that? And he's right. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. By the way. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. First episode. Yeah, Pride Month in... What August probably when this is gonna air? Yeah, probably. Shout out. Yeah, like yeah. last year. Uh, <laughs> we are. So, so all of this happens, and the camera just pans to Carlito, and he goes, "This isn't cool." Come it on, Carlito. Maria. Carlito, the homophobic man. Let the boys hang out, tickle each other's feet, and dress up. What's wrong with that, dude? There's nothing wrong For with real. that. Go watch some See No real. Evil. We all did that already. For was real. this the same writer as the guy that at Mania or whatever it was when Booker T just walked down the hall and all of the weirdos were just like being weird? It's gotta Ooh, be. Gotta be. It's he gotta was be. looking feet and Paul Burchill was like, hey, I'm here. As a as the number one heat analyst, that's just Snitsky's character now. He just wants to sniff people's feet. I don't know why he acted like it was disgusting that he smelled Goldust's feet when he was smelling other guys' feet at uh on heat. But yeah, but on. he wasn't ready for it. He wasn't ready for it. Well, that's his guy, too. Like, Goldust has been his teammate for a couple weeks. Yeah. Oh, they're tag... Okay, they're yeah. tag partners. They're tag oh, yeah, partners. All right. Yeah, because yeah, they're weird. Get it? Yep. The oddballs. He, he, he. Come on. Carlito's just I, a, yeah. a fucker in that segment. Fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. I have no greater analysis than that's literally what happened. Will it ever have an impact on anything again? Probably not. I... <laughs> I didn't find it as bad. It's just funny. I don't know. No, I thought it was fine. It w- look, it was entertaining. Yeah. I'm not shitting on that. I'm just like, what? It's just a massive non sequitur. True. Yeah. Yeah, they just didn't have uh, the next 30 minutes of TV time planned out. They spent apparently. 40 fucking minutes with two big segments and then that RVD shell match that went like 10 minutes and was mid. So it just felt long, and then this whole like second half of Raw just flew by. Yeah, and then yeah. we get Triple H at 
a little table drinking coffee. Emerald, tell us about Triple H and his coffee. Well, <laughs> you know, he's sipping that good Joe. Probably no cream, Hello. probably Joe's no right sugar. There. Is he? Yeah, he's right there. Hi. Hello. Hey, what's up? Yeah, it's what's me. it like being what's it like being uh uh sipped by Triple H? <sighs> Dude, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> It's it's quite the experience, I must say. You know, being being pressed down and compressed and superheated into a uh, cup of coffee is really a wild experience. I don't think it's for everybody, but uh, if you want to try new things in life, I'd say go for it. Do you think Triple you get H a cup a good of Joe too. on the You Don't yeah. Have to Do This store? Yeah, listeners, Ooh. children especially, <laughs> no. jump in to a big press. And then jump into boiling water. Yep. At 17,000 patrons, one of us will be made into coffee. Your pick. Well said. Hell Nico, yeah. It's Nico. That's the spoiler. It's Nico. He's a genetic process. freak, and he's not normal, and he can take it. True. <laughs> How have we gone this long on this episode? There's still... They take seven minutes total, but there's five segments left that we have to talk about. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna keep it a spoiler with you. We haven't gone down. <laughs> but it's longer than I thought we'd go because most of this shit just doesn't matter. True. Like, no. It it, no. it went fast, but none of it matters for anything. Anyway, Triple H in his coffee. Yeah, he's sipping it, and then uh, who comes out of the woodworks? It's uh, it's Shawn Michaels. What? And he's like, you apologized. Uh to vince what the fuck is wrong with you you're a traitor you're a you're a bootlicker you got no self-respect you used to be somebody i used to respect you but you you apologize to vince fuck you and leaves all angry and triple oh. h is like oh before he left he looked at him and he hit his nose and said mid he just True. looked him straight in the eye he couldn't see him through his nose you know what i mean <laughs> No, big... I don't. Have you seen Triple H's nose, dude? Yeah, he gets hit there a lot. I guess it is pretty swollen. No, it's just... <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. We'll leave it at that. He's got giganticism in the nose. And then we got five-star match general Trevor Murdoch. He's in the ring. And I'm going to cut the quick promo. Ooh. The critics I have made their the choice. Neck. They saw the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> they saw it see no evil. And you know what? Their pick for best leading actor will be Tom Hanks. That's for sure. Oh, yes, that's, that's right. for... He gains a finger 11 comes out. All combined like a Voltron. Uh, and out comes out uh, Kane. Uh, and then they have a match. I guess what you could technically call a match. Don't you take this from Ty, number one Trevor Murdoch fan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was going to give it to Kane's Apostle, but okay. Yeah, Somebody, Kane's I here. I thought you were going to keep rolling with it. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> get away from me. Get it out of my face. Get it out of my hands. It, uh, the match was I on. I'm the only person that knows who Trevor Murdoch is. <laughs> Come who else on. Is gonna talk yeah, I think it's a real toss up between me and Ty because Ty, Ty is Trevor Murdoch's number one fan and he's not around a lot. So. Fair enough. Okay. Is this one of the Highlanders? No. <laughs> what the no, fuck? Are they? They're coming, dude. <laughs> They're coming. I promise what you. you. You've been saying that for a year in real life. Where the fuck are they? Listen, they're coming. Um, so, Kane at two times speed. Just imagine Kane. Brrr, he's running down to the ring. He uh, hits Murdoch three times. Murdoch goes, ah! And then uh, gets his knee chop. Kane just goozles him and choke slams him. That's it. Kane kills him in 38 seconds. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, Kane's. Like okay, I did my I did my business. Wait, I'm gonna kill him <laughs> again. Sure. Another the choke slam. The, cr one more the time. crowd went crazy. One more time. He's like, you know what? I will do it All one right. more time. And then the Kane mask appears and it goes ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> and it, you hear Kane's actual voice go. You thought it was over on May 19th, Kane. This is only the beginning. This will never be over. And, and Kane starts melting in the ring, going, no, oh, God, no. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't get paid off. 
And that just and leaves then it at that. gets in a Paris Hilton jab. Like, that was quicker no, yeah. than one of her relationships. With Matt Leinart. That lasted as long as Paris Hilton and Matt Leinart's relationship put me in a fucking time machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, number one Arizona Cardinals superstar or whatever, Matt Leinart. USC icon. <laughs> So then we got uh, Tori Wilson making her way. She got what? There is some advanced statistical cope that is happening over the course of this match regarding the movie. It's mostly what they talk about. Okay. They really shit on the Da Vinci Code on the commentary. This is the most anybody talked about that movie before or since, and they're really going for it. So it must have finished number one at the box office. But Jerry Lawler drops a statistic that somebody definitely mined out of obscurity to try to cope with the fact that this movie did not go well. Jerry Lawler says See No Evil had the third highest per screen average gate at the box office last weekend. Um, I looked up Da Vinci Code's box office and it's uh, $760 million. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But the third highest per screen average gate Oh, guys, come yeah, on. you're right, you're right, you're right. Oh my goodness, what no does way. That mean? Gregory Dark is a visionary. Put him up. Gregory Dark is a fraud, and we will flail him. We're going to get him on the pod soon. Gregory That's Dark we're is going to get Gregory Dark to direct One Night in Raw Down when we hit 5,000 yes! patrons. Yes! <laughs> oh, that would be so good. I can't wait. Hold on, I got some here. What Let me got? cook a little bit. You cooking? <clears throat> do we go through the next match while you do that? Mr. 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 Johnny Benny, I'm going to quiz you on how much you've been paying attention to the show. Oh, it's quiz time. Right, I'm, I'm interested in a new segment here. Oh. This might be a one and done as I'm not on Raw all the time. But Oh, hold on, Joe. Look at this graphic of Raw down quiz time. Dude, why why did it get so dark? No way. And our first guest, Benny Emerald. Come on down to the stage, buddy. Come on. Right. It's for you. I want you. I'm going to give you a dramatic reading of a WWE Superstars theme <laughs> song. And I want you to guess whose song it is. Are okay. you ready, Benny We got Emerald? it. We got this. I mean, I'm, I'm here. You dragged me out of my closet again, so. All right. It is Pride Month. Here we go. Pride Month. Whoa. It's time to rock and roll. (laughs) Whoa. This time, I'm in control. Whoa. Whoa. Right now, I own the streets. I got the keys to the city because that's how I get down. Down, yeah. Benny Emerald, whose theme song did I just read? Was Was that a raw... Uh, yes. yes. It, this okay. is a. This is. I can tell you. This is a raw superstar. Uh, You've got ten seconds on the clock. Is that Rob Van Dam? Wrong. I'm I sorry did. to say that this is wrong. It is not the theme song of Rob Van Dam. This is indeed the theme song of former WWE Women's Champion Trish Stratus. Wow. Oh, got it. Tune in next time, folks. Benny Emerald will give him another theme song. And we will put a gun <laughs> to his head if he gets it wrong that time. Damn. There's a gun to my head every time. Ain't no stopping me now. This, seg- <laughs> this segment is called You Think You Know It. You the theme you know. song quiz show. <laughs> you you don't think you have to know it. Speaking of new music, Tori Wilson's <laughs> got some new music. It's it's, it's, it's fine. Well, oh, okay, it's bad. No. It's on the new it's on a new C D, dude. Yeah, nah, when are, we, oh, when are okay. you and Nico reviewing Reckless Intent, the uh, WWE CD? I don't know. We should do that soon. If Nico would ever get his ass to freaking raw down. Yeah, where is he in now? Oklahoma? He, uh, dude, last I heard, he was in Nebraska. I don't know what he's doing over there. He's sucking off all the corn. Yeah, the he's sucking corn. Well, that's how they germinate way. it. Uh, <laughs> Mickey James is here. And I wish I could go through the match more, but... Nothing really happens. Like Mickey's just fucking jabbing her in the stomach, going crazy. Tori can't do shit. Uh, Mickey lands a kick on her near fall. Mickey sends Tori into the ropes. 
Uh, Mickey's just pounding the shit out of her. Tori can't do any offense at all. Uh, spinning back kick. And Mickey uh, debuts her new finish, which is that uh, jumping DDT and kills Tori in about two minutes. Uh, Mickey's celebrating. Trish's music hits. You know, it's time to rock and roll. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the crowd goes crazy for it. It was nuts. And Trish's like, oh, hold on, Mickey, Mickey. No, 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 no. Don't, don't freak out. You don't have to worry about Beth Phoenix illegally attacking you anymore. She can do it legally now. Allow me to introduce you to new WWE diva, your old friend and my new friend, Beth Phoenix. And Mickey's like, what? What? No. And Mickey's stomping around going, ah, shit. And uh, she's like, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. I don't know where she's at. So she starts leaving and turns around and gets fucking killed by Beth Phoenix just immediately starts beating the shit out of Mickey. It was crazy. And uh, Mickey uh, gets up and leaves, and Trish blows them a kiss. So, pretty cool. I like the, I like the ending. It's interesting. Uh, it's it's funny to me how the, earlier in the episode they announced the, the diva uh, search or whatever. And then now they're they're already announcing a brand new diva. So like, is the search over? No, no, no. no, no. They, no. they got a new she's diva. She's she's been there a couple weeks. Um, but now there. she can legally a, beat the shit legally, out of me, Mickey, yeah, because she has a contract. Okay. So it's legal to destroy your coworkers canonically in the Fed now. Yeah, well, and, and allegedly, yeah, I mean, always has been. and allegedly, Mickey and Beth have a history. So that's that's why. Did you guys see the Coomer that printed out and laminated the big picture of Tori Wilson? That's crazy. No, I didn't. No, no I, didn't. I did not see that. Yeah, somebody has a big laminated poster of just Tori Wilson, like the PNG they'd have on the website or whatever. They spent a lot of money on this and imagine, they brought it there. Imagine going Especially through back in those days. Uh, security, getting patted down, putting your keys in a little bin, going through the metal detector, and you have that big poster, and they're all looking at you funny, and then you got to walk to your seat. With that big fucking poster in your hand, and how do you not have any shame in your heart <laughs> at that point? You're already a wrestling fan. Your shame is gone. Oh, come ah. on. Fair enough. You know what? You know, you're right. But look, there's yeah. all this strife, all of this anger. Yeah? It's time for a little love in the room, guys. Oh, that sounds nice. Who, we who come we to see our boy Big Viscera, oh. who is... Largely absent from uh, anything that happens in Raw, and is just relegated <laughs> to like heat matches and stuff. But I mean, he's around. He's a heat so, icon. Yeah, he's an before icon. You, before you get into the angle that's about to be discussed, ties is a thing that's been happening on Heat. Mm, like this... no, I think this was an okay. old bit that they kissed on Raw one time. I don't know when. I'll I'll do some research right now. Okay. Anyway. Could... Yeah. As far as I was aware, this was not a bit. And anytime Viscera's on Raw, on he he just kind of kills people. So I hey, I don't oh, know, but cool. yep. Uh... So Viscera's out in the ring, and he calls out to Lillian Garcia, who's sitting out there. Uh, and he says that they've had problems before in the past, but he realizes it's time for him to settle down, and he's got to do it with her. And so he calls her into the ring. And she says, hold on a minute. Last time we were together, you dumped me in Vegas for a bunch of Godfather's hoes. And that's where he has a little oh. grin. He's like, yeah, I did. I did do that. I did do that. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> and then, you know, and everyone's like, ooh. And then he says, hold on, I got something for you. And he reaches into his outfit and pulls out a cheeseburger with a bite taken out of it. <laughs> Looks like a terrible burger. I thought it was a it, Burger it King ad. had a bite in it, too. Not. It might have been a Burger King, because they're a sponsor. So. It and... was dangerously close to looking like he was jorking it, though. <laughs> he, really, he really had to fish for that burger. It was deep in his pants. He was storking that onion big style under there. For real. And so everyone is now stunned as he pulls out the burger to offer it to Lithian Garcia. She's like, no, what? Says, I won't have to eat this anymore. If we can go to a 24-hour chapel and we can get married tonight, 
that I can come home to your home cooked meals every night instead. And you're loving. And you're loving. And then he gets down on one knee, burger in one hand, <laughs> microphone in the other, <laughs> and proposes if she would marry him. And she stands in shock for a, a few moments. And then you hear the savior of the people, Armando Alejandro Estrada, just show up. Como se dice? say? This is not a bit we fed into, like, an AI. All of these <laughs> things happen. <laughs> yep. And he comes out and he goes, Congratulations to the happy couple. And I'm sure your future children will give a lot of people nightmares. But before you give this big beast an answer, Big Vis is, como se dice, hungry for action. But unfortunately for you, Visero, it is of the Samoan bulldozer, Umaga. And everyone is now has whiplash, as there are so many random things have now met in the ring. As now Umaga is running down to the ring, Viscera throws off his like overcoat that he has on, throws the burger, Lillian gets the hell out of the ring. And before Umaga can get in the ring, Viscera hits him. And then climbs out of the ring. This is the first time Umaga has been stopped outside of getting his nuts grabbed by Ric Flair. It's the unstoppable force meeting the immovable object. This it is, was this crazy. Is, this is true meat we got going on. This is, this is a meat match if there ever was a meat match. Three However, match. in charging Umaga down, Umaga ducks out of the way as his killer instincts kick on. And... Viscera runs into the ring post, knocking himself silly, which then lets Umaga hit him a few times, uh, kind of half put him in the ring, and then Alejandro does a big, like, airplane swoop up in crashing motion with his arms, and then Umaga gets the signal, running, headbutts Viscera, killing him, to what she then gets the Samoan spike, Alejandro breaks the cigar and he smikes Viscera and rolls his rolls his body out of the ring, and then just yells at him as he writhes around in what wasn't even like an official match. No, um, I don't know. I don't know why he showed up to save Lillian and kill Viscera, but you can't job out Big Daddy V, brother. That's I true. Yeah, they did though. I don't. I, it's this Not is the wild brother. thing. Yeah, Not well, officially. That's a good point. That's a good point. And yeah. I want to I want to just say every time Armando switched to Spanish, uh, the peak captions just said speaking in foreign language. It's true. It's true. <laughs> didn't even try. Okay, I got the I got the lore here, guys. Oh. In June Lori 2005, Garcia. Lillian Garcia began an on-screen romance with Viscera. The angle saw Lillian Garcia propose to Viscera, stating that she wanted to marry him during the Vengeance pay-per-view. The angle ended at Vengeance when Viscera rejected Lillian in favor of the Godfather's hose. The angle was briefly resurrected 11 months later when he proposed to her again on oh, May 22nd, okay. but was interrupted right, so by Umaga. Been... Okay, so it's been a year, and they just do this bit again. Yep. It's back, baby. Did something happen? Did they forget they had to fill, like, time? Like... <laughs> well, that's what it's got to be, right? Because we got a solid three minutes of... Uh, we had the we had the Murdoch match, uh, if we could call that a match. You had Carlito and Maria and Schnitzky and Goldust, and then this. Uh, they just yeah, they just ran out of shit. The main event goes twelve minutes, and it's all just Shawn Michaels getting beaten up. Yep. Spoiler: I fast forwarded through most of that. What? It's nothing, and you listeners should have too. I watched the whole dang thing. Ugh. <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> But yeah, no, I think it's time for the main event, guys. Hooray! Woo! Sure. We first we show backstage the squad's like, yeah, we're gonna fucking murder him, and they run into Triple H. And they're like, hey, buddy, <laughs> your job is Bless to you. stand right there Come and on, kill Sean when Vince tells you to. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever, and they all put their hands you know, and to, 
to count off one, two, three, end of HBK, and Hunter channels Officer Sassy and refuses to do it while looking sad. And they go, yeah, whatever. Mm. And they hit the one, two, three, end of HBK and come out. And then in the ring, their music hits. They're going crazy. They've got the air horn. Somebody's been holding up a sign that says the Sissy Squad all night, but it gets a it gets a zoom in here because they're out here. Jim oh. Ross says these guys are as phony as Joan Rivers on the red carpet. <laughs> Another real time machine that <laughs> wow. I got put into. Uh, Sean comes out wielding a chair. Jim Ross thinks Shawn Michaels might actually die tonight, like he does most weeks. Sean runs into the ring with a chair. The squad scatters. And Vince comes out and says, hey, ref, I decided we actually don't need a ref. Get the fuck out of here. Also, take the chair with you. So the ref tries to get the chair, and Shawn Michaels is just threatening to kill the ref with it. And then the squad just come up behind him and start pummeling him. His cheerleader thrown up, back down. He's taunted. Then they beat him. And they beat him. And they beat him. And they beat him. And they beat him. (laughs) And they beat him. No I way. fast forward about a minute. And they beat him. And they beat him. Another two minutes. And they beat him. And they beat him. This match goes 12 <laughs> minutes. It's all just beating him. And beating him. After legitimately five minutes on the timeline of Shawn Michaels just getting kicked on the floor. He counters. The One of them tra- grabs a chair and is going to go just kill him with it. He counters the chair shot, fires up, not he throws he back body drops one of them over the ropes onto their trampoline, which was pretty cool. The only cool thing that happens here. Clears the ring with strikes and a chair. Mikey gets scoop slammed, hit with the elbow drop. Somebody has a sign in the crowd that says, I'm the shit. Who let that in here? <laughs> Can't say that on television. Uh yeah, Sean hits two of the squad people with the sweet chin music. And then as he's going for a third one, Nikki has a chair, runs in, and just smashes Shawn Michaels' disgusting. knee. It was gross. It was really loud. As he's extending his leg and just destroys his knee. The old man is pummeled. They start ripping his pants off. I, they were going for the knee, but they started up by the crotch. It was really weird. I mean, I was into it. But they just start ripping his pants off. They get his knee out. They take the brace off. The crowd starts chanting for Triple H. They put the chair on Shawn Michaels' knee. Kenny goes to the top rope. Hits a about three quarters of the way across the ring. Real high up top rope leg drop. Don't do that, kids. It fucks your back up. Onto the chair and knee. The old man has been pummeled for a very long time. Again, 12 minutes is what this runs. And Vince is like, alright, fine. Triple H, come fucking kill Shawn. And Triple H walks down looking angry. The Spirit Squad chant for the death of Shawn Michaels and hold up his corpse in the corner. And Triple H is like, oh, geez, oh, I don't know. Oh, Oh, he starts taunting, but oh, man, guys, I don't know. And then Kenny walks over, and he grips up Triple H's long, hard cock. Oh. I'll do it. Okay. And just takes the cock, and Mm -hmm. he goes to swing it, but Triple H gets in the way. Oh. And Kenny's like, dude, what the heck? Come on. And then he goes to run at, tri- he backs up, and he goes to run at Triple H again with the cock. And Triple H spine busters Kenny, pummels all of the squad, rips his shirt off, pedigrees Kenny, and angry Vince has been at the top of the rope. He's like, what the fuck? And Triple H just mean mugs him. And the show ends. He's mewing because he all knows that we're edging at home and he won't let us fucking finish, dude. Let us finish. God damn it. I mean, yeah, this, this, is just, man... this is just a warm up. God damn yeah. it. This old man gets pummeled for 12 minutes, but Triple H uh, saves him at the end, sort of. It was fine. Thank you. It was a <laughs> fine segment. Thank you. Thank you. I don't, I don't know, man. 12 minutes of it, that? No, it didn't. Nothing happened. <laughs> no, that that this was literally the worst part of the episode. Yep. Yeah. It did count no. as an official match, by the way. I fast forwarded for most of this. What was the what is the official result? I assume no contest. No contest. Twelve minutes. Oh, wow. 
Twelve That's contests terrible. and assault and battery on one poor old man and his knee. No contest. I mean, we see that, that enough on SmackDown. Yeah, the Biden. chair to Sean's knee was fucking nasty. That and then they, and then they remove his brace and just start like fucking assaulting his knee. It's like just kill the man if you want to kill the man. Don't torture him. It's yeah, wrong. Mitch and Mitch and Nikki were really like trying to grip up his gooch. How about the and we're like, wait, hold man. on, wrong spot, wrong like, spot. Like, okay, so I'm watching this whole segment, and like, I don't, I don't want to like, you know, it's a show and stuff. Like this segment though was almost getting to me to the point where like, if I was there, I would just start bashing their skulls in with a chair to leave him alone. That's how invested I was. But That's it good was though. Just shit, and I couldn't do anything about it. Emerald is gripping up his fucking uh, his chair at home, going, "God damn it! I want to help I'm out." I'm about to throw my whole fucking couch at him. I want to help. <laughs> Poor Sean. Poor Christian Baptist Sean. Yeah. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are you Freddy? <sighs> I think so. Emerald, are you ready? <laughs> am, I, am I ready? What's are you ready? Are you? <laughs> Shut up. Dude, I'm not Freddy. Stop asking. Dude, come on. <laughs> what was that? Do not meet Ty in a Chuck E. Cheese after 8 p.m. It's, why would, yeah, it's true. I'll be hitting you with chairs. We're going whore, whore, they, whore. They call me Balls Mahoney for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> what a good episode. We're just making Freddy Fazbear noises at the end. Was that here. the joke? God damn it. Yes. Did we go over an hour on this fucking thing? Uh, we're at an hour 26 so. currently. We're still going. Ow. We're still going. Yeah, we're still going. We still have we still have matches to cover, man. <laughs> Everyone's yeah, dude. Oh, mics still... are dying. <laughs> You're not ready for uh the next episode? Hello, Martin. Hello? Oh, I think he it's left. A triple feature. Ah, uh, well, now that everyone's left me alone in Freddy Fazbear's kingdom, I hope you all have a good night. And you've been rawed down. Are you, are you spaghetti?